Hello, folks. Tonight I'm capturing M106. I'm getting some luminosity, so I'm starting a new project. I don't know when you're going to see this video, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Here's the auto guiding. So one of the things you can do with this is you can monitor the focus. And let me show you what I do for that. I will maximize the screen. And the stars are looking pretty good. I'm really excited about this. I didn't know that um, there's a small galaxy right here, and there's some other galaxies throughout. And then in this area up here, there is another neat-looking one. When I did this years ago, I, I never got any of these other galaxies, so I'm I'm real excited about this one. I, I think the last time I took this was like three years ago with my DSLR. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here. First off, we can one of the things you can do to keep checking on focus is move this image to scroll. You can just move around and Exposure finished. see some of these other objects. And what I really like about this is I'm using the field flattener without the focal reducer. And the, the field seems kind of really, really good. Much better than, than it was before. When I used to go with the the uh, folk reducer, even though it had a flattener with it, when I got to the outer rim stars, they were still sort of that oblong, but not with this field flattener. It keeps it nice and flat. Uh, it keeps the nice the stars nice and rounded. So, anyways, uh, so we've got the image preview. We can come over here to focus eight and just go on some of these stars and see what they should be. This one right here is one point one nine. This one's 1.11. This one up here is 1.67. And let's see how they do uh, on a couple of these other frames. All right, so I just switched this frame, and this one went from 1.67 to 1.66. So that's good. This one's 1.24. And I think before it was 1.21 or 1.19, something like that. And this one's 1.11, which was exactly what it was before. So you can keep an eye on your you're focusing by using this focus aid and have it on high magnification. Another thing that pixelate, and I'm not sure how to use this yet. If you just turn it on, it's reading the background ADU that it's in ADUs. And here's your average at uh, 1500 right now, minimums 1088. Now that'll change if I go to, if I change back to the wide field, notice what it did, it went down Exposure to, Exposure finished. This is running just above 100, this is 72. So this will tell you how your background screen is, but I I don't know what my value should be in my area to know what's bad or what's good. I think it's a long-term thing where I can actually have some expectations, what I can expect the background brightness to be. So all this is a work in progress and see you in a bit. <laughs> well, howdy folks. It's a few nights after, and I just wanted to clarify some of this focusing business. So you want to go on a good star like this one right here. Uh, you don't want to go on one that's too big. So something, something mid-sized and it's 1.10 to another frame and it's 1.21. So it's gonna vary a bit, 1.06, and that's normal. Another thing you can check is while it's in this high field of view, you know, no matter what the number says, if the stars look nice and tight like they are here, then it's probably pretty good. And if they start looking funny or if they start getting those donut holes, then you know it's out of focus, no matter what the numbers say down here. So there's nothing like just looking at the actual image. Yeah, this is one of the, the focus is critical, and unfortunately, uh, Astrophotography Tool isn't as good as some of the other nameless programs as far as monitoring focus. So hopefully I will uh, do something and make it better. Anyways, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, I am back. And let's take a look at some of my raw data here. After I stacked it, this was my luminosity. I came out pretty well, I thought. Here's the red, green, and blue. 
Okay, then what I did was I did the color combination, RGB color combination, and I next did the dynamic background extraction. So it removed a lot of that gradient you can see over here and it pretty much flattened the field. Okay, and then I did a noise reduction. Now I'm gonna do a separate video on noise reduction. I just discovered this new noise reduction. It's not new, it's in PixInsight, but it, uh, it's new to me. And I, I'm gonna do a real quick tutorial just on that. So here's my luminosity again, what I did with that after the dynamic background extraction. Again, I did that noise reduction, that multilinear transform noise reduction on the luminosity. And then I combined the luminosity with the RGB and wound up with this. Yeah, maybe I'll figure, show you how I do the dynamic background extraction because it's a little whacked out. Uh, I've got these values from somebody else, and I can't remember who, a long time ago. But here, here goes my dynamic background extraction. I'll, I'll do it so you can copy down the numbers if you like it. So tolerance, I go with two. Shadows relaxation, six. Let me click open this sample generation, and then I change this default radius to 98. And I leave the samples per row at 10, and I leave this alone, and then I press generate. All right, and it gives me that. And also, I come down here to where it says test correction, and do the traditional subtraction. And then what I would do is just, you know, just start clicking. Uh, some of these boxes off or moving them around a little bit. This I left pretty much the same. I just removed that one box over there. And over here, I removed uh, let's take that one out. Yeah, let's take that one out. Move this one up a little bit. Take this one out. Take that one out. Actually, yeah. And take that one out. Yeah, so that's, that looks. That's where I would, how I would do my background extraction. And then, of course, you just press this check mark down here and give it a second. And this, undo that. Screen transform function because I have it in linear. And so that's the gradient set of removed. And here's the flattened image. This looks pretty good. Okay, well, let's switch gears a bit and see what I did in Photoshop. You guys are probably aware of that if you follow my channel. I, do, I use both Photoshop and PixInsight. So this is my RGB image, what this looked like. And this was my LRGB image. After I did some more Hoon and Han and Pix Insight, and I did some bunch of stuff in Photoshop and wound up with this. Then I brought it back into Pix Insight and did some more star tweaking, color modifications in Pix Insight, and noise reduction. And then I brought it back into Photoshop and wound up with this for my final image. I did a lot more color tweaking here. And then, as a final image, I, I cropped it even more. So this is already cropped right here quite a bit. And then I really cropped it. Well, there's not too much difference between this image and this image, but I sort of centered it because I wanted both of these galaxies. So that's all I have for you for now, folks, and thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you later.